Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, I think we are live. So I'm very excited to welcome everyone to this uh, super interesting conversation and very, very relevant conversation. Um, our speaker is Sam Le Liberty. She is the, um, the host and producer of the Freedom Lifestyle podcast, which features celebrity guests. And in globally recognized brand sponsors, she is the podcast pro and guru. And she's also a father pro, uh, where she uh, consults brands on branded podcasts. So very, very relevant. She's also the creator of Launch a Podcast on Budget. Uh, Sam is the expert and has helped more than a thousand inspiring podcasters launch, market, and monetize their shows. So she knows what she's doing. Uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll save time at the end to address it. And uh, Sam, very, very excited to introduce you and handing the mic over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you who are on this call right now. I know that despite the constraints of a pandemic, you could probably be anywhere right now and you chose to be listening to this session. And I'm really grateful for that. I don't take that lightly or attention. And so in return today, I have about 20-ish minutes of content. We'll see how fast I speak today. And I have two jobs. The first job is to convince those that are marketers in the room, business owners, entrepreneurs to allocate resources towards launching a podcast. Or if you're strapped, reallocate some of your existing resources from some of your other channels towards launching a podcast. My second goal is for those who might be tuning in because they already have a podcast and they want to get some value too. Well, I definitely have created this presentation with you in mind. I really want to remind you why you started. I know it can be tough sometimes to stick with it, to consistently create content. So my second job is to give you that boost of motivation and inspiration and help you think about creating content in a new way. If you've ever listened to one of my presentations before, my webinars or courses, you know, I love practical takeaways. I do Sam's pro tips. I've definitely included a lot of that. So stick around to the end of the presentation where I share some of my secret sauce. And I also give an opportunity for Q&A. So if you have a question, there's literally no question off the table today. So why would you listen to me? Thank you, Liron, for such an amazing introduction. I really appreciate that because if you're going to listen to someone and you're going to take somebody's advice, it should be from somebody who has achieved some level of success or some goal that you currently have. And someone who's done it fairly recently, that they can really speak to, you know, what's relevant in marketing a podcast in this case, and they know what it can actually take and the information isn't outdated. So I still am a podcaster. I still work with clients every single day as a Fiverr Pro seller. And I've done all of this in just three years. So you can have a lot of quick success and momentum with podcasting. As Leron said, I've produced 50 podcast episodes myself in four seasons in three years. I've had celebrity guests. I've had brand sponsor like Fiverr and WeWork and Bumble. But most importantly, most relevant today, I've used my podcast as a sales and marketing channel to actually create revenue streams that didn't exist before. So I've launched offers, new products, relaunched new offers or old offers I had on this channel that I now own. When it comes to clients, I've worked with all kinds of podcasters, so over a thousand now to launch, market, or monetize their show. And if you know Fiverr, you know the rating system. It's honestly very stressful to maintain a five-star rating, which I've been able to do. But I know any day now, I'm going to have someone give me that three or four-star rating. But for now, it's perfect five stars. I work with B2C podcasters, B2B. I'm assuming there's actually a mix in the room today. So if you're live right now, I'd be curious, type in the chat. Are you someone who's more B2C? You're an individual launching a podcast to build your personal brand. You just want to have fun. Consultants, thought leaders, coaches. Uh, influencers, or are you more of a B2B podcast where you're a business who wants to launch a branded podcast as a form of content marketing? You want to increase your online real estate, build your brand, develop community, all of that, pop it into the chat, which one you are. I love to kick off these presentations with a level set of the opportunity that we have today. 
And so this data that I'm going to show you, I'll talk right now about what the bias is. And I think on our screen, we're not able to see the whole deck. Like, is there a way to make me a bit smaller and make my deck bigger? I think there's a way to do that. Let's see if we can make that happen on in backstage. But this data is US based. It's people who are over 12 years and older, um, but it is the most comprehensive study that's been done on podcast consumer trends. It's produced annually by Edison Research. These are just six of my favorite stats that exist. But if you're trying to make an internal case um, within your company, or perhaps you love these stats, definitely go check out the full report. It's the Edison Consumer Report. I also like podcastinsights.com. So right away, familiarity, 55% of people in the United States over 12 years old, 155 million, there we go, have actually listened to a podcast before. So last year was the first year it went mainstream where more people had listened to a podcast that hadn't listened to a podcast. And honestly, I'm really happy about this because over the last three years that I've been podcasting, I've had so many people come up to me on the street who run into me, friends, family, colleagues I'm catching up with, and they say like, oh, I've been meaning to watch your podcast. Like, I'm, it's so exciting. Good for you. In my head, I'm like, watch your podcast. I don't think you know what a podcast actually is, right? A lot of people don't even understand what this medium is. I'm going to assume you do, but as a refresher, this is an audio first form of content where you're literally in the listener's ear. And fun fact, it actually got its name from the iPod. The podcast comes from a combination of iPod and broadcast. Popularity, 37% of Americans, 104 million listen to podcasts every single month. And 24% or 68 million listen to podcasts every single week. The number of people who have been listening to podcasts, this number basically keeps growing. So since this study started in 2015, this popularity has increased, increased like five to six percent every single year. People who listen to podcasts, they are committed. I'm sure you can relate to this. If you start a podcast, 80% of you are going to finish it or listen to most of it. So that means your listeners are going to devote a lot more attention to listening to your voice and listening to your podcast than they will if they're just going to read your words on a website or an email newsletter. Podcast listeners are connected. So 94% check social media every single day. And they're actually more active on all social media platforms, which means your podcast listeners are much more likely to help your content go viral, help share your content, because it's so natural for them to be on social media. So once you establish that relationship with them, they're likely to help advocate for your show and help it grow. 74% will listen to podcasts to learn new things, right? So it's a great way to reach a really busy audience who's looking for information on the go. This is amazing for thought leaders, building your expertise within your industry, and really showcasing what you know or your unique perspective on something and to an audience who wants to learn that information. Finally, 87% of people listen to podcasts because they're convenient, which is a really great segue into my next slide about why podcasts have become so sticky and why they continue to increase in popularity. Five to 6% every single year, more people are regular podcast listeners. So when you're deciding what type of content to create for your audience, what form of content, whether it's your personal brand or your corporate, you've got to remember, even though you want it to be about you, it's not about you. It's about your customer. It's about, in this case, your listener. And so let's give the people what they want. In 2021 and beyond, we are busier than ever. Even in a pandemic, we've heard people say that despite now having to have their kids at home and doing at-home learning, their job expectations haven't changed. People are so, so, so busy that what you're competing for more than anything else is someone's attention, right? It's an extremely valuable currency today. And why people love podcasts is because it's a multitasking medium. I can listen to a podcast while doing something else. It's a mobile consumption tool primarily, right? People are primarily listening to podcasts on their mobile device via a smartphone app. So they can listen to podcasts anywhere, everywhere, during commute, while doing the dishes, while exercising, even while drifting off to sleep. So not only are you helping people do more with less, you're also reaching your audience in a very personal setting, which you might not have been able to do in the past. Compared to like a YouTube video or a blog post, 
it's really hard to do something else while reading a blog post. So you're not really giving the people what they want and what they need. The second thing that makes podcasts so appealing to listeners is that they're on demand. I know that Netflix really changed the game and so did Uber in terms of our preferences and frankly, our expectations. We want things when we want them right now. We don't want to be disrupted in the middle of our day when we're in our inbox with your email newsletter or when I'm on social media trying to catch up with a friend and I see your brand ad. Yes, these forms of content are great, but they're not on demand. When someone opens the podcast app, they're prime. They're ready for your content. They want to listen to your podcast. They're not annoyed that your content just disrupted them. You're giving it to them exactly when they want it. And for a lot of people, it's so much easier to just hit play and listen to something while doing something else. And so it's really meeting the people where they're at. What does this mean though for your business? We've talked about the opportunity, a bit of the size of the market, why they're so popular, but I still need to impress you and I still need to do my job, which is convincing you to launch a podcast for your business, right? Or re-inspire you if you're an existing podcaster. And so what I want to do now is do like a bit of a sales and marketing refresher, which is something I think we all know. People buy from people that they know, that they like, and they trust. This is like marketing 101. And guess what? Podcasts let you do this at scale. At scale, you can get people to like you, trust you, and know who you are and know what your brand is. Because podcasts are personal. It's an intimate medium. I'm speaking directly into your ears into your customer's ears in a very powerful and a personal way, right? Unlike traditional marketing channels, which tend to be very curated, very precise, very perfect, several rounds of edits have gone through before a piece of copy or social media post ever goes onto the internet. Podcasts are a bit more casual. They're a bit more unfiltered. And you know what? That's kind of how I am. And so I really like that. Not to mention just having it as your voice instead of words on a page it really gives that human element. So your listeners feel like I now have an authentic feel for what the personality of your brand actually is. So not only do I know you, but I'm actually starting to like you. How can you get them to trust you though? Well, they allow you to go a lot deeper. Unlike other channels, right, where it's typically like an influx of information, you're competing for someone's attention with short bursts of short forms of content and people say everyone has an attention span of a goldfish, right? So you're like really restricted. Well, podcasts are long form material, right? You can go a lot deeper to get your message across. You're not constrained by time limits or character counts. You can show your expertise. You can dig deeper into the story of your brand, your unique perspective in a way that other formats often can't accommodate. Right now, I'm struggling and I'm worried that I'm not going to finish this in 20 to 25 minutes. I realistically have like dozens of hours of material on why you should launch a podcast and why it's so great and all these hacks that I've learned. And I'd love to tell you the story of my podcast about what it was like for me three years ago and like why I almost didn't do it and what worked and what didn't work. But I know I only have 20 minutes of your attention and so I have to be very concise. Well, guess what? With podcasts, you have a lot more freedom. And finally, you own that channel. You own your brand's message. You get to own the position that you put yourself or your brand in and you get to do it in the most strategic light. Once you've built up an audience who likes this content and values this content, they're gonna keep coming back because you're entertaining them, you're educating them, and they're gonna connect with your brand, the host, in a very personal way that they now trust you. And so when you have a product launch coming up or you wanna promote something or get something into the market, you now have this audience who is warm, who's primed. They know you, they like you, they trust you, and you can rely a lot less on cold ads. If I was making a internal case for my company, now I'm, I'm gonna go after this presentation and say, okay, Sam, you've convinced me, now I need to convince this person. I would basically put two columns on the screen of what the ROI of podcasting is, and I'd figure out which are relevant to my companies or my, my individual brands, short-term and long-term objectives. So one, it's building in a new audience, right? Attracting new potential customers, new potential leads. And then on the second, more bottom of funnel, it's strengthening the loyalty of your existing customers, existing fans, and really deepening that connection with them. So I put the two columns, I've listed some of the things that I would include on those, and I would try my very best to actually track what the KPI could be for that and how you're actually gonna measure it. 
you can discover your brand now, right? You're now on, you're now in more places online. Your podcast is appearing in more search results. You have more links back to your website as people naturally pick up the content and reference it because the content's so valuable. And if it's done correctly, a big portion of your listeners will be people who just naturally and organically discovered your podcast by searching for certain types of content. You can also tap into completely new audiences. We are now playing a global game. In fact, I'm curious who's attending live right now. Where are you tuning in from? Drop it into the chat where you're currently living and tuning in from. Podcasts are global. While I included stats at the beginning of America, US stats, podcast listeners is a global audience. In fact, South Korea leads the world in the percentage of people who listen to a podcast every single month, followed by Spain and then Sweden. You can acquire new leads from your podcast by having a really smart call to action at the end of the episodes where you direct your listener to maybe a landing page on your website with gated content. You now turn that listener into an email subscriber, which you can track. Strategic networking. I'm working with a brand right now who is exclusively inviting guests on the podcast who they want to do business with. You spend 30 minutes with somebody getting to know their story, hyping them up, learning about their business. That can be a connection for life that you can do business with. And also if done correctly, you can now top, tap into their audience. So if you give them really amazing content to share about the podcast, and they have an audience of people who's an ideal fit for your business, you can tap into their audience simply by them being really proud to share it. Of course, thought leadership is a big part of podcasting. A lot of people overlook solo episodes. A lot of people think podcasting is just interview based. But my favorite episodes, and I try to do every second episode on my show, a solo episode, where it's just me. I come on, I'm teaching, I'm, ed um, I'm educating. And because I do that, I'm able to book paid speaking gigs. I even got to MC a conference simply because I've showcased my skills and my expertise through these solo episodes and built my thought leadership. Nurturing is the second column, right? So that's how we grow a new audience. How do you nurture an existing audience? For a lot of companies, churn is a big issue, right? Well, you can now market this podcast to all of your existing customers. Anyone who's on your email list, who's following you on social, who maybe didn't really engage with your other forms of content marketing because they weren't as convenient. They couldn't as easily integrate them into their lives as they can a podcast that's for multitasking and on demand. You can now strengthen your relationships with these existing customers, build loyalty, reduce churn. This can also help build advocacy, turn your customers into advocates by sharing your content and referring other people to it. This is very natural for podcast listeners. In fact, we like to brag that we're learning. It's like, oh, look at this podcast episode. I just learned. I'm so smart. I just learned about this topic. So that's a very natural behavior for podcast listeners. You can build community with your existing audience by really giving them the behind the scenes view of what's going on at your company, who the team is behind the brand, give them that VIP access, and definitely move them through the funnel. A lot of people talk about podcasts as a top of funnel marketing strategy, and absolutely it is. We're building awareness. What I think is often overlooked is how you can really do bottom of funnel where you, you know, complete that marketing funnel. You complete that loop by really turning your customers into advocates by proudly sharing your content and feeling such a strong connection to your brand once you've developed that relationship with them. I now want to introduce you to a very powerful stat about podcasting. And the first one's a bit scary, right? And I bet if you told someone, I'm thinking of launching a podcast, they said to you, oh, that's what the world needs is another podcast. That's an actual quote, what someone wrote on one of my ads for my podcasting course. So I know those people are out there, okay? 1.7 million podcasts are live and they are growing. But the thing is, is that only 18% are active. That means only 18% of these shows have actually released a new episode in the last three months. So what that shows is there is so much room for someone to come in here to create consistent content, to stick with it and really provide value. All it has never been easier and cheaper for cutting edge marketers like you and entrepreneurs to launch a podcast. It's also never been easier and cheaper for the average human to launch a podcast just for fun. So just because there's a lot of shows doesn't mean they're consistently creating content. So there's actually less noise than you think. But if you're going to create a podcast, which you should, let's make sure that we're listening to one that's worth listening to. And I think everyone who's here today already has a check in the right direction because you're investing the time to learn about the strategy and the opportunity before jumping in. 
signals that you're going to create a really amazing, amazing show. How do you create an amazing show? I got three main tips for you. Your goal, okay, is to be in someone's rotation. What does that mean? Podcast listeners listen to an average of seven shows per week. So in a week, there'll be seven different shows. We'll all be tuning into their content. You got to get into that mix. You got to get into that rotation. That's your goal. And you do that by one, having the winning combination of being both entertaining and educating. Okay. People listen to podcasts for one of the following. And if you can figure out how to do both, that's your winning combo. You also need to assume people don't want to listen to your podcast. Okay. <laughs> Even if you have the most amazing podcast and you will, and it's so valuable and it's so great and you're giving away all your secrets and you can't believe you're not charging people for this at the end of the episode, don't expect the people to just come. You need to be able to market that value if you're going to include value and it definitely needs to be valuable. Think of it as a, as a transaction, right? They're giving you their attention, which is such a hot commodity right now and something so valuable. And in return, you've got to give them something. Third, ruthlessly edit your podcast, okay? Take as long as it takes to get your point across and not a second more. If you're like, I'm going to create podcasts about 30 minutes and you're editing one and you're like, wow, this episode is a dud or not a dud. I'll apologize. I'll repeat that. This episode is great with 20 minutes, but you know, we were so efficient with what we had to say. We said it was going to be a 30 minute episode. Let's fill some stuff in. Don't respect your listeners time. Only give them what it takes to get your point across and not a second longer. So don't underestimate the value of editing your podcast. Don't be that person that just starts recording and doesn't edit a thing out. I know there's amazing shows like Tim Ferriss. He's my guy, but he coughs in the middle of the episode and doesn't even edit that out. Well, until we're Tim Ferriss, let's take a scan through it and let's make sure we're giving the best part of the content to our listeners. I want to wrap up this presentation with three personal pro tips of mine that I've used on my show and that I've really realized is a repeatable tactic because I've now worked with thousands of podcasters. Oh, the animation is on on that slide. So you can just click that through. But essentially, pre-launch, okay? The first time someone listens to your podcast, it should not be the day that it goes live. I really encourage you to uh, give yourself two weeks prior to the show launch to let people know it's coming. Maybe release a trailer, which is a tip from Never Two. But really warm it up, you know, sneak peek the guests, highlight it, you know, nurture your email list, know that people need to see things a few times, but definitely don't un underestimate the pre-launch of a podcast. Create a trailer that is such an amazing um, opportunity for you that now exists. When you're creating a podcast episode, when you upload it, you either say this is an episode or this is a trailer or this is a bonus episode. If you click trailer, that gets pinned to the top. So if you're on episode 550 and someone discovers episode 550, they go to your profile and they can see that trailer first, which is like your elevator pitch. Not every single time are you going to build credibility and say who you are and say what you started this and all this stuff and what this show is about because you got to get to the point and your loyal listeners who come every time are going to be like, we know that's why you want this podcast. So create that 60 second trailer and it'll pin it right to the top. My third pro tip is to only have one call to action and to switch it up. The most common thing is at the end of the episode, hey, if you like this episode, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, share. That's great. That's easy. But if I'm on episode 550 and I reviewed you after episode 12 because I thought it was good, what else are you asking me to do? So switch it up. Get creative, but only give them one. If you give them too many things to do, they're going to do nothing. But if someone gets to the end of your episode, which is one of my favorite analytics to track, is your consumption analytics, right? More important than downloads in a lot of cases. Are people listening to the full episode? If they're listening to the full episode, at the end, they're loving you. They're loving this. They're primed to do something. Give them something to do. Send them to a landing page. Send them to a piece of content online. Continue the conversation, strengthen that relationship, and really get them to do you a solid. That kind of concludes what I had to present for you today. As I said, I've got a lot more content to share and a lot more advice, and I'd even love to tell you my personal story. So if you want to work together one-on-one, -on -one, I am a Fiverr Pro seller. I've also included my email address on the slide. It's just Sam at What's Your Free. You can also hit me up on Instagram because as a podcast listener, I'm pretty active on social so if you want to make this happen, I'd love to be the one to help you do that.
Thank you so much, Sam. There was so much information uh, in uh, a short amount of time. So really appreciate your insights there. I thought we can take a few questions from the audience. If you have, please drop it in. Um, you know, Sam Farber has a, a podcast, a branded podcast, also called 929. Uh, so your your uh, point about keeping things concise really resonated with me personally because I hate listening to 50-minute podcasts and only getting sort of one action on them out of them. So the, the, the point of the podcast was a 9-minute, 29 seconds focus on action items. It, it really resonated. Um, I got a question sort of from me first, which is maybe – to start at the end. So you have a podcast, you built a podcast, um, you're sort of looking at measuring success of this podcast, right? How, how What sort of metrics, KPLs, sh should you set as success metrics? And what are, what are sort of baselines for that? How do you know if this is just not a channel for you and it's not working? And when you pull the plug, how do you continue to invest in it? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think so many people just default to the vanity metrics, and there's many. So that's always a good place to start. You don't have to wonder how many people listen to your podcast. You don't need to wonder if you hit them on mobile or what device they have or what city they're in. You get a lot of just geographical, classic vanity data right from your podcast post. So those are the easy thing to measure and what people think about the most in terms of increasing. And while I think that's important, what I think is more important is your consumption analytics which is how much of the episode are people listening to? It's great if you're getting, you know, new unique downloads every single episode, but people are dropping off and bouncing at 20% into your episode. That means you're a great marketer. You know, you've done a great job on the brand marketing team we on to drive traffic to the podcast. We know about it. This sounds great. But when it's in my ears, I'm like, this isn't actually for me. That means you have more of a content problem. And the reverse can often be true, right? If you're having people listen to 80 to 90% of the podcast, which is what most people do, that's what you want to aim for, that's great. You have great content, but maybe you have a marketing problem. Maybe this is the case internally for you to allocate new, more resources to marketing it. So I think those are the most important analytics to track. When it comes to setting goals for your podcast, it's like you want to really have it relate to a bigger picture in your business and figure out how you're gonna measure that. So I've given the example of the brand who specifically wants to interview people they wanna do business with. Well, that's very easy. They can now go at the end of the season, how many people from our 10 episodes did we actually do business with? That is a very easy thing to track. Other people are looking to actually sell products for their e-commerce store. Well, okay, let's have an exclusive coupon code that we only share on our podcast. We can very easily track how many people use that coupon code. Or thirdly, with those call to actions where a lot of marketers right now are creating lead pages, lead magnets, free valuable content in exchange for someone's email address. Well, guess what? Let's create one just for the podcast community and let's see how many people opt into that and let's watch what happens as we nurture them through our marketing sequence. So all these things are really tactical ways that you can measure the success. Um, but more than anything else, just like remember why you started. A lot of people work with me because they just like want to have fun and have great conversations and make an impact. And it's like, you know what, if you're doing that, then you're successful. And I'll take it you're still having fun uh, with your own podcast. Yeah. I mean, you know, my podcast has changed quite a bit. It's about freedom lifestyle. I was helping people work online, work from anywhere. Now it's a pandemic, you know, it's kind of put a little bit of a wrench in terms of, well, you know, what value can I provide in the market? And, you know, I'm really having to rethink about my content. And I think that's a good lesson is you don't want to podcast just the podcast, right? So how can you take breaks in between seasons, which I really encourage you to do is create a season. Don't say, I'm going to launch a podcast. I'm going to do it forever. Say, I'm going to launch a season. It's going to be three months long, weekly for 12 weeks. And then take a break and pause and refresh it for season two. Got it. Uh, we have a question, one, one question, and then we have to wrap up from Kim, who is launching a company and wants to understand a bit more about how you can leverage a podcast as a as a way to, uh, it's a B2B company, how can she leverage her company, uh, her podcast to, to gain leads and uh, I assume it's at somewhere at the top of the funnel, but how, how can you sort of uh, drive good leads from that? Yeah, so very similar to what we were talking about right now in terms of actually tracking. 
But how do you more so make a B2B podcast relevant? I think that's a bigger question. I'm working with a company right now. I'll give them a shout out. It's Brave Software. They're a browser. They are you know, competing with Chrome. And what they really want to do is they want to have a podcast that gets advertisers to spend money on Brave Browser, right? But they know they can't just have a podcast that's a sales pitch for their brand, for their B2B company. They need to re be relevant and they need to create content that's related to their industry that's valuable for their ideal listener. And so we've come up with the concept of the brave marketer, right? We're integrating our B2B brand in it, but in a way that's not a sales pitch, in a way that the average marketer, average ad spender would be like, that sounds interesting. And it's storytelling. It's stories of marketers who had brave moments where, you know, when something was uncertain or they, they weren't sure what to do, they leaned into that and they were courageous and they're telling these stories. So it's content marketing. It needs to be valuable, but I think storytelling is really important with B2B podcasts as well. Yeah, great advice. I feel like we can uh, have this conversation for hours and, uh, you know, you gave a lot of really valuable advice. Um, I'll just remind everyone if, if, if you want to reach out to Sam, she's a seller on Fiverr, fiverr.com slash what's your free, or you can email her at sam at what's your free .com or check out on social sam dot the liberty. Uh, sam, thank you so much for your time and your insights, and uh, uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, thank you everybody for listening. And if you, uh, start that podcast, please let Sam know that you started that podcast also from listening to this talk. I think that's great. So thank you, everybody, and thank you again, Sam.